Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy Reefy. We're back here again today to discuss more on the homunculus. Now, if you notice here, my little baby boy Harambe, uh, I'm, I'm actually building him up as a water homunculus so I can test him out for uh, speed clearing and trial of ascension hard mode, as you guys are well familiar with that I like to do. Now, of course, I made a video discussing what I wanted to choose or which one I should choose, and uh, I got a few responses back on like saying like, hey, we you know, we want to see what we want to choose, like we want to know you know what's good for us. And uh, I even asked, you know, would you guys would that be something you guys would like to see? And uh, a few responded back like, yeah, hey, that would be uh, that would be pretty awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and today we're gonna be discussing all three attributes of the homunculus, which skill trees uh, direct towards certain aspects of the game. And that way you kind of get a general idea on, you know, how you should prepare to upgrade your homunculus in order to prepare for a certain area that you might need improvement on. So, first one we got up is, of course, the fire homunculus. Uh, pardon the squeaky chair in the back, you know, my, my chair is pretty squeaky, but anyways. The first attack attacks the enemy target to inflict continuous damage for one turn with a 50% chance. That is the first skill, okay? Uh, it basically the entire skill tree uh, comprises of a first skill, first skill upgrade, second skill, second skill upgrade, and then a third skill. So we're going to go ahead and discuss the different upgrades first. So we're going to talk about first skill and then the first skill upgrades, and then we can like go down the tree. But then we're going to split off once we get to the second skill. So we'll discuss the entire branching of the tree after that, so you kind of get a little bit of an idea and it doesn't get too messy. So. First skill, of course, 50% chance for uh, con inflicting continuous damage. Now we've got the upgrades. Now you can either choose the upper half upgrade or the bottom half upgrade. Now it is not limited to the entire top half of the tree. If you guys notice that middle line right there after the first skill upgrade, that actually indicates that you can in fact choose the top uh, first skill upgrade and then move back down towards the bottom half of the tree. So don't worry about that, you know, it's actually pretty convenient that they added that in. So the, the top half is Flame Ray Flood, attacks the enemy target to inflict continuous damage for one turn with a 50% chance, and now it increases according to the attack speed, which is nice. So now we got speed scaling damage. The second skill on the bottom half is Flame Ray Chain, which basically turns it into a multi-hit attack where it is a 50% chance to inflict continuous damage per hit which is pretty nice if you're looking more towards necro build. So I can already tell you right now, the way it's appearing for me, we've got the top half of the tree mainly focusing on PvP, and we've got the bottom half of the tree mainly focusing on PvE. And you kind of see this occurring, either, you know, the top half or the bottom half will kind of be designated for certain areas, but will split off respectively. So now we've got the second skill that we got to choose from. So the, t uh, the first skill on the top, or the second skill that you choose from on the top attacks the enemy target to weaken the defense for two turns. So the second skill will be decreasing the defense if you choose the top one. So kind of moving down the tree, now we've got two upgrades that you can do to the second skill. We've got speed scaling. Again, we got speed scaling on a two turn cooldown. So this is like squall, uh, a lower damage squall that weakens the defense, which can be pretty freaking nasty. And then the second upgrade we have is the Accelerate, Flaming Magic Bullet Accelerate, where it increases your attack gauge by 50%, uh, on top of the decreasing of the defense, of course. And that's also a two-turn cooldown, which is pretty freaking awesome, because if you think about it, uh, you can chain into that, you know, if you have Violent Runes and stuff like that, or if you don't have Violent Runes, you know, 50% attack gauge increase is pretty freaking awesome. But I think most people will go for the speed scaling to get that Squall type ability on a Fire Nuker, because there's no Squalls on a fire nuker right there's no fire chimera that has squall it's just recon and you guys know recon okay so we got speed scaling we've got of course we've got the attack gauge reduction or uh, increase so it's mainly leaning again towards pvp so the third skill whoops yep i know my battery's low i'm sorry about that guys uh attacks the enemy target to inflict damage the damage increases according to the attack speed of both you and the target so now we have speed scaling again single target so if you want to build a single target nuker with speed scaling this is definitely the monster to do it on but it's also on a four turn cooldown which is pretty nice and then the last upgrade for the last third scale for the top half of the tree which in my opinion is the best one to choose from because the multipliers look pretty promising 
we have Flaming Thunder. That sounds pretty freaking badass. Four turn cooldown. Attacks all enemies to inflict damage. Damage increases according to attack speed. So now we have the entire top half of the tree pretty much solely focused on PvP build. Of course, you could use it in some PvE areas, you know, like Rift or something like that if you build speed scalings. But the way I view it, it's PvP built. You can either go single target or you can go AoE with the third skill. But, 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 if you want to choose speed scaling, both third skills have speed scaling. And basically the entire top half is just PvP build. And I would personally go with the AoE attack. You know, there's just not a lot of AoE attackers for fire attribute. Okay, so now talking about the bottom half of the tree, the second skill upgrade is attacks the enemy target to decrease the attack speed for two turns. Okay, so now we've got instead of a defense break, we've got an attack speed reduction on the second skill, and we've got some upgrades going into that as well. So the first upgrade is attacks the enemy target to decrease the attack speed and leave a branding effect for two turns. So now we've got it's still single target. And now we've got, it's also still a single hit attack. Keep that in mind. And now we've got branding effect. So for you guys that love brand in, you know, Rift, I know a lot of people have been building the Ninetale Fox to do branding in Rift uh, just because they're desperate for branding effect. Here's your chance. This is the chance to have branding effect in Rift. And I, I view this solely as a Rift skill. So now we've got Rift going on up here. And then what is this second skill upgrade? It is attacks enemy target to three times to decrease the attack speed for two turns. So now we've got another multi-hit attack. So not only do we have a first skill upgrade for multi-hit, we also got a multi-hit second skill upgrade as well to decrease the attack speed. So we got dots, multi-hit, and attack speed, multi-hit. So that's pretty freaking awesome right there for Necro. Yep, you guessed it, Necro. Now the third skill for the top half of the, of the bottom branch. Attacks the enemy target to inflict damage. Damage increases by 30% for each harmful effect on the enemy. That is, that is pretty much exactly what Brandia does, except that Brandia sleeps the enemy if uh, she fails to kill him. So you don't need sleep and rift, like I was saying. Again, mainly goes towards rift. So if you guys need some like rift damage, fire damage, that kind of thing, he is pretty freaking awesome and on top of that when he dies he'll be brought back to life to deal a little bit of damage after that so i mean hey it's it revives upon death technically now of course it's a passive ability and the boss does put on oblivion so it does block out passives so you have to keep that in mind but it is pretty nice and this is a this is the opportunity to deal some pretty nice damage to the rift boss now the next third skill is Flame Explosion attacks the enemy target four times to inflict continuous damage for one turn. So now we've got basically another multi-hit attack, which basically just solidifies that now we've got Rift and we've got Necro. If you're not going for a Necro build and you want to go for a Rift build, uh, I wouldn't go for the multi-hit continu uh, continuous damage effect, mainly because you really don't need multi-hit. I would go for this one mainly because you could get more damage having more attack speed. So having speed scaling would be nice for Necro. Uh, but hold your thought on Necro build because we will be going into the wind one, which could be better for, I'm sorry, not Necro, but uh, Rift. It would be better for Rift. Okay, so the wind one, I'm just telling you now, has better skills oriented towards Rift. So now we're talking about the water one. The water one actually has a freeze, a 50%, a 15% chance to freeze single target on his first skill. Now we've, we're going to go through the same exact uh, way. We're going to talk about the skills and then we're going to go down the branches respectively. So we've got attacks the enemy target to remove a beneficial effect and freezes the target for one turn with a 15% chance. Upgrades to 50% chance, which is pretty important to note. So it does remove a beneficial effect and then freezes a target, which is kind of nice if you're looking more for a PVP build. Now the bottom one, attacks all enemies to freeze them for one turn with a 15% chance upgrades to 25% chance. That is nuts. That is absolutely nuts. Attacks all enemies. So it's an AOE auto attack. So it's an AOE first skill attack. Okay. That's what I'm basically saying. Kind of like the magic knights, but now it has like a built in CC capabilities. It's like putting despair on the magic knights. Basically that's, that's basically what it is. But you can also put Despair on this guy, so it would be a 44% chance, according to Combinatorics, a 44% chance 
to either stun or freeze an enemy on the first skill if it's an AoE. Okay? That's pretty freaking awesome. So, I mean, if you guys want to do that, it's pretty good for CC. I would see that's more towards a, uh, a TOA build. And, of course, it has good damage multipliers. So, I'd probably build him for damage build. So, now we've got our second skills. We've got, on the top half, we've got a text enemy target to weaken the target's defense for two turns. So, this is kind of leaning more towards a PvP build, if you guys didn't notice. So, we're going to go ahead and talk about the top half of the tree. The first upgrade for the second skill attacks all enemies to weaken the defense for two turns. An AoE defense break attack. This is almost identical to the uh, defense breaking that we have on the Ethna and Rocky. So the Hell Ladies. Basically the Wind and the Fire one. Now it's a 100% chance to weaken the defense for two turns. But it's on a three turn cooldown. Whereas theirs is on a two turn cooldown. But that's freaking awesome. AoE defense break. Uh, three turn cooldown. That is absolutely awesome. I love that. I absolutely love that. I would I would honestly go for that if the third skills kind of agreed with me, but they don't. So again, we're leaning more towards a PvP build. So this is where it splits off. On the second on the second second skill upgrade, we have attacks enemy target to inflict damage proportionate to the target's max HP and weakens the defense for two turns. So this one I view more as a boss type skill. So because of that. This could work in Rift, but at the same time, mm, because it, you know, you've got good CC capabilities on the first skill, why would you want to waste that on Rift? You know, you could just choose win for that. But nonetheless, it deals damage proportionate to the max HP. So you could use it in something like TOA. Again, you could use TOA to deal max HP damage and weakens the defense for two turns, which is pretty freaking powerful against bosses. So now we've got on the top part, attacks all enemies. So it's an AOE attack. And then the cooldowns will be decreased by one turn each according to the number of enemies defeated. So it's like a less powerful version of Teshar. Teshar resets completely if you kill an enemy, just period. If you kill an enemy, his third skill will reset. Of course, it has to be killed with his third skill for his third skill to reset. But yeah, nonetheless, if you kill an enemy with the third skill, the entire cooldown of the third skill will be done. Boom, you can use it again next turn. Now, the thing is with this skill, it's kind of like that, but you have to kill all of the enemies and it's a four turn cooldown so if you kill four enemies then your cooldown will be off you'll be ready you'll be good to go you can use a skill again so you could use this in like toa you know if you kill four enemies or if you kill three enemies he'll almost be off cooldown or off cooldown completely which is pretty nice it just depends on the speed scaling but it doesn't do any cc capabilities so again leaning more towards like dungeons or pvp type build you know damage type build now the second third skill attacks the enemy target to inflict damage proportionate to the target's max hp and reduces the target's attack bar to zero so this is what i view again more towards bosses it deals damage proportionate to the max hp of the enemy and it decreases the attack age all the way to zero now i would view this as pretty powerful if you picked rift because now he has a second skill that deals max hp damage and you've got a third skill that does max hp damage that could be pretty powerful for Rift, and the damage multipliers seem pretty pretty decent on this uh, on these skills. So, yeah, it could be it could end up being uh, pretty freaking awesome. And of course, it's on a four turn cooldown, uh, just that for you to keep in mind on that. So I view this more towards the top part of the tree being for PvP, and the bottom part of that top part of the tree being for bosses. Now, looking more towards the bottom half of the tree, we've got. I see magic bullet attacks all enemies. So another AOE attack and decreases the attack age by 30% with a 50% chance. So now you got a 50-50 chance to decrease the enemy's attack age by 30%. Now the thing with this is it's kind of like galleons uh, if you upgrade it correctly. So the, uh, the first second skill upgrade that we have attacks all enemies to absorb their attack bar by 30% each with a 50% chance. And it upgrades to 65% chance. So with this, now you know, I, I honestly, is it supposed to be 65% chance or is it going to be a 45% attack gauge uh, absorption? You know, like which does the 15% harmful effect go into, you know? That's, that's something I want to know because that, that can be kind of confusing for some people. But it's an AoE attack, kind of like Galleon where you absorb the attack gauge, all right? So what that means is if you remove 30% of their attack gauge, you absorb it so your attack gauge increases by 30%.
which is pretty awesome when you're in certain circumstances, right? It will give you a bit of a, a heads up. And this one, if it all activates correctly, you'll get your next turn almost immediately. I mean, think about Okeanos, how he gets his attack age increased by a certain percent every time he stuns an enemy on his third skill. It's kind of like that. It'll just start stacking and stacking and stacking almost to the point where it's like pretty much like a violent proc, right? So that's pretty awesome as well. And then we've got Icy Magic Bullet Chain. Attacks all enemies three times to decrease the attack bar by 30% each with a 50% chance. And it upgrades uh, by 15% as well. So basically it's a multi-hit attack now. And basically with multi-hits, it just increases the chances of the skills activating, of course, because you're running through that uh, little chance multiple times. So you got a bigger chance for at least once or twice for it to upgrade or to activate. So if you guys need the attack age reduction, you don't care about him going, you know, two times in a row or something like that, uh, then yeah, this would be a better chance because you could potentially decrease the attack age by 30 or by 90% chance because it stacks for that 30%. Okay, so now we're looking more towards a uh, a a no moving type build, uh, but actually, you know, both of them are they're, they're like we're just gonna consider this entire bottom half just CC, okay? Because honestly, the entire bottom half of the tree is just complete CC for TOA. So the first third skill we've got here is attacks all enemies to inflict damage and freezes them for one turn, which is pretty powerful. It's a four turn cooldown. So if you if you need something like Tyron. Or if you, you know, just need it for one less cooldown, you know, kind of like Tyrone, then yeah, this would pretty much replace it. And then for the second one, we've got tax all enemies to inflict two, uh, two continuous damage effects for two turns. And then another continuous damage effect is inflicted additionally for each harmful effect on the enemy with a 50% chance on a four turn cooldown. So it's kind of like, you know, Hemos or Thrain to where they do two continuous damage effects for two turns. But now you're going to get an additional continuous damage effect according to the number of debuffs on the enemies. Now, it's a 50% chance to activate, but we're just going to assume that it's activating. So let's say there's like four debuffs on it. You'll get four additional continuous damage effects. Now, now remember, it's a 50% chance to activate. So like on average, it'll be more towards like of those four debuffs, you'll get like two additional continuous damage effects. So, you know, like half of them, but that's still pretty freaking powerful. So if you're looking more towards like a CC build with damage, you know, like if you need a damager, if you don't want to use Beretta, then this water homunculus could be pretty powerful. And this is the skill that I have my eyes on. Seriously, I have my eyes on this skill. It's <laughs> I'm looking forward to, to it. And the damage uh, actually uh, the damage multipliers on it seem pretty decent as well because it does do, uh, you know, direct damage. Now we're moving into the wind homunculus. Now, a lot of people. I think a lot of lower levels are kind of viewing the water or uh, the wind homunculus as um, less powerful, which is definitely not the case. Okay, so the first skill attacks the enemy target and disturbs HP recovery. So now we got heal block for two turns with a 50% chance. So that's shock ray. Now, the wind homunculus, in my opinion, is like the worst homunculus, not based on skills but solely based because it's so freaking hard to farm the wind dungeon. So if you're like willing to put up with that much bullshit in the wind dungeon, uh, by all means, build the wind homunculus. I'm just telling you now that the wind dungeon is absolutely horseshit. It's freaking hard. I don't, I don't know a single person yet that has hit triple S at all. Like it's freaking impossible. <laughs> you need multi healers or you need Perna, period. It's, it's absolutely freaking nuts, but they did nerf it actually recently. They just uh, nerfed it like last night, of, of course, because it was way too hard. Uh, but anyways, top half of the tree. Okay, so we got the first skill upgrade. We got attacks the enemy target three times to disturb the HP recovery for two turns with a 50% chance. Upgrades, not at all. So we've got a multi-hitter at this top part. If uh, you know, if you guys are looking more towards Necro, the bottom uh, first skill upgrade attacks the enemy target to disturb the HP recovery for two turns with a 50% chance, and destroys the enemy's max HP by 10% of the damage dealt. Now, I'm personally not really a fan of destroying HP because you know, I mean, really, where would you use that? I don't know any other unit in the game besides the Wind Monkey King that does well in destroy runes. 
um, but maybe that's just me. Uh, and and it's a good thing that you can choose the top uh, skill upgrade and then move towards the bottom uh, half of the tree. You know that way, if you do want to choose the multi hitter, you can. And it's I mean it's heal block, so I mean it's gonna work in necro, it's gonna work in rift, it's gonna work in any of the dungeons really. So it's a, it's not a bad upgrade to choose for the multi hitter. It's not like dots where you can't use it in rift. So looking at the top half of the tree, the second skill attacks the enemy target de decreases the attack speed for two turns. Okay, and of course it decreases to a three turn cooldown. So now we're going into the upgrades of the second skill. We've got first upgrade of the second skill, attacks the enemy target to decrease the attack speed and leave a branding effect. So now we've got a speed reduction and a branding effect, okay? Remember what we were talking about on the fire homunculus? How he's not the only monster that you can really build for, or he's not the only homunculus build for Rift? So now you got another branding effect for Rift, just to keep that in mind. Although the fire one's easier to farm. So now the second second skill upgrade is attacks the enemy target three times to, de to decrease the attack speed for two turns. So now this is another multi-hitter for Necro, okay? So it looks uh, overall promising for Necro. So the third skill we've got attacks the enemy target three times to weaken the defense and leaves a branding effect for two turns. A huge damage will be inflicted in the end. Again, Necro. But this one actually brings a branding effect, which is pretty freaking awesome. And then this last third skill on the top half of the tree randomly attacks the enemies five times. The inflicted damage increases if the same target hit gets hit again. Again, Necro, because there's only one enemy. There's only one boss. There's no crystals. So even if you randomly attack five times, those five hits are going to hit the boss if one of your enemies hasn't been, or one of your allies hasn't been stolen, right? Because that's like a little bit of the mechanics of the Necro boss. So now we've got a five multi-hit attack on a four turn cooldown, okay? And it mainly deals damage. So you have to choose between a branding effect for three hits or five hits for just damage, for straight up damage. So this entire top half of the tree, even with an attack that's single target, or I mean, sorry, it's, it's uh, this one where it's single target and leaves a branding effect. I just viewed this entire top half of the tree necro because it's where all of the multi-hit attacks are, and it's just right there, it's super convenient, it brings every debuff that you possibly need. So now, the second skill on the bottom half of the tree, attacks enemy target to stun the target for one turn with a 50% chance. So now it's a 50% chance stun, and it's on a three turn cooldown. Yeah, could be nice. I mean, it, it seems kinda like okay, and it depends on the upgrades. So the first upgrade we have for that is attacks enemy target to stun the target for one turn, with a 50% chance and destroys the enemy's max HP by 30% of the damage dealt. So it's going back again on destroying HP. Uh, I don't know if they're ever going to add a dungeon or a, an area of the game that requires destroying the target's HP. Uh, and maybe they will, and that's where this guy will shine. But I don't see any possibility of there being one soon. And I don't think there's any use for someone that destroys HP unless you're going some really, really, really slow offense type build. Because remember, you can't use this guy on defense. Okay? But it is a max HP type uh, attack. Alright, so now we've got attacks the enemy target to stun the target for one turn. So now it's not a 50% chance to, uh, to stun him. It's a complete stun. A complete stun. So this one, I don't, I'm don't, i not really sure how I feel about it. It's on a tier two turn cooldown. So that could be pretty awesome for PvP, like live PvP. But even then, like, a, you know, it's, it's just a stun. It's just a stun. It just depends on how much damage it does at that point. But it, it is nice because it is a two turn cooldown. If it was a three turn cooldown, I'd be like, nah, no, forget it. <laughs> so now, we, now we're going into the third skills. The first third skill we have attacks the enemy target to destroy the enemy's max HP by 50% of the damage dealt all right okay that's i mean that's all right because you know again it's destroying the max hp and it at least corresponds with the second skill and the first skill if there is a use for destroying the max hp now you guys are completely entitled to your opinion if you love destroying max hp uh by all means build him for this there's three skills that you can choose for destroying max hp i mean it's right there for the picking so if you like destroying max hp Go for it, and you can even stack on uh, destroy runes to you know have a field day with destroying the max HP. But you know my opinion, destroying max HP is completely unnecessary and honestly kind of trash. 
So now the next third skill we have, attacks the enemy target to inflict damage. The enemy can't be revived if the enemy is dis uh, is defeated with the skill. Now this is not a counter to Theomars because Theomars doesn't revive. He just pops Endure whenever you get his HP down to one. So yeah, this is not a Theomars counter, but it is a counter towards the Water Fairy King. So you can actually do this. It's kind of like a, a win version of Rocky. So yeah, this isn't really something you'd bring against Perna because he's wind attribute, but it's something that you could bring against the Water Fairy King. So that's kind of interesting, you know. I, I you know I really don't mind it, but really you don't. I don't know if you really bring a single target into arena offense. So I mean that's completely up to you. It's on a four turn cooldown that could be kind of nice, especially on like a reviver team. Um, so the way I view it, we've got this entire bottom half of the tree dealing more towards PVP. Uh, although kind of unconventional PvP, but yeah, regardless. And then this entire top half is just Necro. It's just completely Necro. So the decision for the Wind one is, are you gonna build the, the Wind one for Necro? I mean, you could build him for Rift too, but the way that I view the multi-hits is for Necro. I mean, you could, you could definitely build him for Rift. Or if you wanna build him for Necro, you could go towards this multi-hit attack where he has four hits on his first and his uh, third skill. And he brings in almost every single debuff that you need. That about do it for the video, guys. A very long video, <laughs> like 25 to 30 minutes. But uh, I hope it was worth it. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did stick with me through this entire video, of course, I'm going to be announcing something really, you know, quickly here. I am doing my TOA hard rush on twitch.tv slash reefy tomorrow uh, on the day or like right before it resets. We're going to be rushing it. We're going to be finishing it. We're going for a new record time. Hopefully we'll beat the Asians this time because they usually beat me by about 10 minutes. Uh, and then of course, important announcement here. Uh, I will be streaming most likely because it's already planned, but you know, I need to talk to the, the people actually on the stream. I will be streaming with CompTUS on Friday. So if you guys want to join in on that, I'm going to be streaming with CompTUS. It will be on Twitch as well. I believe their Twitch channel name is twitch.tv slash CompTUS USA. Uh, you might have to double check on that, but it will be on Twitch and I'll be streaming with them and we'll be discussing probably the new updates some live PvP and stuff like that. It'll be about, I'll be on there for about 40 minutes because I got class right after and I got to run. <laughs> so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Stay tuned for the live streams. You know, we got two important ones this week, TOA Rush and then CompTOS stream that I'll be uh, featured on and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. So I will see you all next time and if there's anything I missed in the homunculus type stuff, just let me know in the comments and then I'll respond to them down there. All right, guys, keep it real.